Denise Jokic and Jasper Wood to the stage. Here you have um, two nice, average, normal child prodigies. Uh, Jasper started playing in public when he was five and had his orchestral debut when he was 13. And Denise must have started in the womb. She comes from a very musical family. Her father, her mother, it's on all sides. Um, Jasper, I don't know much about your instrument, but I do know that Denise has the Bon Séjour Stradivarius in... Bonjour. Bonjour? Oh, I thought it was Bon Séjour. All right. Um, and, and not to be crass about it, uh, it's worth six million bucks. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk first? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, why don't you sit down? Okay. Uh. Well, good afternoon. It really is a, a wonderful and unique opportunity for both Denise and I to be here this afternoon. Uh, normally when people call us up for something, it's for us to play our instruments. And uh, we're going to do that today, later. But um, it's also a chance for us to uh, verbalize a little bit about uh, what we do. Well, it's kind of a funny story how Jasper and I actually met. I, I don't know if you remember uh, the same way I do, but it um, feels like ages ago, actually. <laughs> but I must have been around five or six years old, and uh, Jasper used to come to the house every Saturday morning, and he used to take violin lessons from my dad. And so, I would have my very busy, chaotic routine of watching Saturday morning cartoons, and uh, Jasper would come and take his violin lesson. And um, there was a point I remember uh, listening to him practice downstairs, being coached by my dad, and, and feeling very stimulated somehow. There's a spark that just hit me right away, and, and I, I suddenly wanted to do that. I, I, I'd been listening to my parents practice for years and years, oh. ever since uh, day one, before day one, and um, something about Jasper really, really struck me and made me want to begin an instrument, and, um, and it's, it's just really funny because we both ended up uh, starting on professional careers as musicians, as we are now, and went through the grueling conservatory education, and, um, and then we started working with the same manager, Richard Paul, and our paths crossed. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like we went full circle, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Meet up again. So yeah. that, that was really cool, and, um, and although we perform extensively on our own as soloists, we both, uh, we both play duos once in a while. Yeah. as well. And it's really a lot of fun. I mean, it's kind of a break from the norm for us um, and gives us something different to look forward to. Right. Yeah. Right. I wanted to talk a little bit uh, right now about uh, what it means to be a musician today and how in the, in the last hundred years music has really gone through a dramatic evolution with the, the introduction of recording where um, now we can can hear what everybody's doing. It, it kind of brings a lot of music closer together and uh, uh, sort of sets a new standard of what, what is acceptable and can be, can be dangerous in its own way because it's, uh, if we're always listening to what other people are doing, and it's, it's almost like we're becoming clones of each other if we're, if we're uh, trying to emulate what everybody else is, uh, is doing by their recordings. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, we kind of have to, to, to step away from just the, re the recording industry and remember that the performance, that, uh, you know, the bond that we get with the audience and that connection and uh, interaction is really what it's all about for, for me, at least in performing. And we do reach people through, through recordings, but it's the actual interaction that really brought me into music. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that's probably the most important thing for me in a performance situation as well. Uh, I really feel that a concert experience is, is like an intimate conversation between 
the artist and the audience. And it's, it's almost like bearing your innermost emotions in front of a total group of strangers in some cases. Um, and it's, it's, it's strange because most of the people we perform for when we go on tour or we play for big, uh, big groups of people are, some have completely different lifestyles, uh, different personalities, and here we are trying to communicate with them, deliver a message, um, and they somehow, the, the aim for me has always been to uh, bond with them in kind of the rawest level, if, if that makes any sense. It's, there are some of the, uh, the very basic human emotions that, that really connect for me when I perform, um, whether it be anger, happiness, jealousy, passion, all of those things are, are, are emotions that we share as human beings and that are so, um, so satisfying to convey through music. And, and as a child, I always felt it was an easy outlet for me. I, I was very shy and I, I just found that speaking through my instrument was, was the easiest way of conveying these feelings. And, um, so that, that's really an important thing for me, but in, in a recording, it's, it's um, a completely different situation. You don't have the energy, the communication between the artist and the yeah, audience. And nowadays with, uh, with the recordings where, uh, where you can digitally edit a performance and put it, paste it back together so you end up with uh, what I call the hypothetical musician of what you would like to sound like. Yeah. And in its own sense, it's a, it's a wonderful thing because it gives a new, a new level to where we can go with music. But uh, as long as we understand that from a live performance and a, a recording that they are different. Very different, yeah. right. Well, Jasper, I know that you just completed uh, the second of your recordings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a week and a half ago, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That and was exciting, yeah. And his, well, I, I know that your first recording was um, a series of caprices by Eckhart Grimm. Yeah, it was solo violin, which... Uh, for me, I, it, it was kind of a weird choice to go for, for a debut disc because nobody knows who Eckhart Gramatay is. And it's solo violin, it's really, it's out there in left field. But mm -hmm. I really had a chance to be me, right? To take these pieces and to put my mark on it. And basically, they're, they're, they're ten caprices with little stories behind them. And uh, I feel like it's a very personal bond and connection. Mm -hmm. That's important, yeah. though. Just also picking repertoire, choosing to perform pieces that you feel a very strong connection to. Because in the classical world, um, sometimes students are brought up to, uh, to learn the standard repertoire. It's like right. the bread and butter of, of um, the cello repertoire, the violin repertoire. You've got to do all the Bach suites, the Beethoven sonatas, the complete Chopin. <laughs> it's yeah. It, it's really. It's there's so much repertoire. You no, know, almost, there. almost they expect you to forget about new music, right? But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but how do you feel about that actually performing new music? Well, that's. I, I think that's um, something that's really exciting for us as young musicians to play music of our time to kind of explore music of composers who are living at the same time as we are because they're experience, uh, experiencing the same things in life that we are. It's kind and of funny about composers. I don't know if people know this in classical music, but composers tend to become famous once they're dead. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense to me. But, because here we are, we're, we're with a living composer, we can go and ask them, you know, what were you thinking here? You know, mm -hmm. What we would do right now to, to be able to go to Mozart or Beethoven and say, what are you thinking of? You know, how, how do you come up with these kind of ideas and, mm -hmm. and express them? And am I doing it right? You know, is this what you're looking for? Yeah, so. it's, it's really kind of almost a responsibility for us, I, I feel, to, to really promote their music, whether it be experimental, whether it be the next Beethoven Ninth of... Uh, yeah, to of discover the, the next great works. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and it takes, it takes a lot of time, and uh, um, 
a lot of trial and error. You know, we're like all the some of these new pieces we're going to play aren't going to be the, the next great works, but we're never going to know unless we're out there trying mm -hmm. and uh, and experimenting. Yeah, yeah, and not being afraid to be criticized mm -hmm. or uh, put down for choosing works that may seem obscure. And I have a, I have a quote here I just want to read because I, I did the opening of the Gustav Klimt exhibit in Ottawa last week. And uh, so I was talking to some friends, you know, after they saw the exhibit, and on top of one of uh, his paintings, uh, to quote uh, Friedrich Schiller, the German poet, he put, you cannot please everyone by your acts and your art. Make it right for the few. It is bad to please the many. <laughs> In its own sense, it, it, it kind of, at least to me, it means to look within and to find my true voice and to not, to not be discouraged and not always try to be out there to play the pieces that everybody wants to hear, to really to, to be there to discover these works and to really develop music, to take it to the next, to the next step. Because mm -hmm. that, that really is the future of music, right. I think. And um, as we grow as humans, I mean, I'm 20 and Jasper, you're 27. 27. Yeah. It's, we're, we're just beginning to experience things in our lives and we have the rest of our lives ahead of us to experience new things and voice that in our music. That's, that's the beauty of music and expression is that we can grow from our experiences in life and really project that to people and, and um, there's, there's kind of a never ending continuity to that. It's, it's, really, it's really amazing because people are always growing, society is always progressing, and, and music follows, I think, in the same direction. And as long as we're always a part of that mm -hmm. development, you know, to take it to the next step. I mean, we, we are in an exciting time with, with this whole internet age and, you know, uh, connectivity, you know, where everybody, we're, we're getting closer and closer, and we really need to remember to find our individual voices and to really, to promote it for what you believe in. Because, right. I mean, we don't want to become this kind of society that, that's exactly the same as each other. I know. Yeah. It's dangerous. It is dangerous, right. Yeah. So do you want to play a song? I guess. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> uh, we're going to play the uh, sort of our own version of uh, Halverson's version of Handel's Passacaglia. Made in 1696, so a little over 300.
Thank you.